den ich jetzt sage. In einer Weltpremiere können wir heute zum ersten Mal die Beta von Daisy zeigen und haben dazu auch gleich noch den Liedentwickler da. Und damit herzlich willkommen, Eugene. Hi, welcome and, and uh, nice that you are here with us and that you brought the Beta of Daisy. It's the first time that we actually see it. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to start the, the material that mm -hmm. you brought and we're going to talk about it and um, try to keep close to the to what we are seeing, but I'm pretty sure we have lots of questions that are maybe not exactly covered in the gameplay we are seeing. So this is the, um, the Gamescom uh, demo and it's uh, the better version. When will we actually play this? Uh, well, that question has no answer yet. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to uh, say that, but uh, the reality of it is that we finished the technology that, that is supposed to support DAISY Uh, really recently, and it took four years uh, to create the new platform, the new engine. And about three to four months ago, we decided that we want to share it with the, this world. And um, we created this demo uh, to showcase the new technology itself, uh, the visuals, the animation system, the physics, to basically show the people uh, that we're heavily working on it, mm -hmm. and we want to deliver uh, the best game possible. Also, uh, I'm going to... Just translate that a little bit. Um, also, ähm, das ist jetzt hier die Beta und es gibt noch keinen Termin, wann ihr das werden das spielen können. Aber sie wollten halt jetzt auf der Gamescom zeigen, dass das Spiel natürlich weiter ganz, ganz stark in Entwicklung ist und dass sie jetzt eigentlich vier Jahre an dieser neuen Engine gearbeitet haben, auf der das jetzt äh, läuft. Darüber werden wir jetzt im Detail natürlich auch noch ein bisschen sprechen. So, um, of course, you said a new engine and that's mm -hmm. of course something very, very interesting. Um, it's rather unusual to change the engine in development. Yeah. Why did you do that? Well, the problem there was that when we started the early access uh, development of DayZ and it was delivered on the main branch on Steam and, and actually started selling, was a game that was running on real virtuality, which is the engine that Arma 3 runs on, which is a bit of different fork as well. And I would sell, uh, say that it was a different thing that we worked with, uh, but also Uh, neither of those engines was able to support what the DAISY as a game should be. And um, if we want to have a good game, we quickly found out it was necessary to make large technological changes to the engine. And those were eventually so large that we basically decided to create a new platform for the company, uh, which is called Infusion. And we mentioned it a couple of times. It's uh, basically um, a work of a couple of guys that joined Bohemia um, A couple of years ago, and brought their own engine uh, called Enforce, and this engine actually became the base platform for Infusion. And we learned a lot from the development on real virtuality, both Enforce and the Infusion itself. And it's still continuing work. It's probably not going to end anytime soon, uh, but it's going to support all the games that Bohemia is going to be making in the future. So it's a large undertaking, and it probably heard the early access a little bit, but I think for the long term or in the long run, it's going to be best for the games that we're going to make. Also, um, AZ hat eine, oder kommt eine neue Engine, das uh, wurde ja schon mal manchmal um, berichtet, uh, in, Infusion is yes. the name of the new engine. Und um, sie haben daran sehr, sehr lange gearbeitet, um, denn sie haben einfach erkannt in der frühen Phase schon vom Early Access von Daisy, dass diese Engine, die ja ursprünglich für Arma 3 gemacht war, also die, um, uh, what's it called, Virtual Reality? Um, real Virtuality. Re actually. Real. It's, it's switched. <laughs> When you look at VR, it's RV. It's, a, it's a just a switcher. Die uh, Real Virtuality um, Engine, die ja auch für die richtigen Hardcore-Militärsimulationen um, benutzt wird, uh, die war nicht so wirklich geeignet für das, was man mit Daisy machen wollte. Und dadurch, äh, sagt es auch selber, ähm, ist auch der ganze Early Access Prozess ganz schön ins Stocken geraten und das hat auch dem, dem Early Access Prozess geschadet. Das ist ja sicherlich nichts Überraschendes. Das hört man ja immer wieder in den Kommentaren, so von wegen, Hö, ist immer noch im Early Access. Das ist einer der Gründe, dass sie eben eine neue Engine brauchten, die flexibler ist. Sie haben auch ähm, Leute von, von ähm, der Fro Frostbite, ähm, former Frostbite Developers, you said? Uh, no, 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 uh, actually, it's uh, the engine that they brought no, in uh, was, was Enforce, yeah, but Enforce. the guys, I think it was, I, I don't want to say anything stupid, ah, so okay. I can't remember from the top of my head, but it was a, a hire that happened before I actually entered the company. Okay, also schon eine ganze Weile her. 
Ja. Äh, ähm, so, it's been a while. Äh, die haben ähm, Leute von, von der Enforce Engine übernommen und wie gesagt, die haben jetzt die letzten Jahre an dieser neuen Engine gearbeitet. Mit der Beta äh, wird sie ins Spiel integriert. The, the better is going to be the switch point. Um, for the yes, engine? basically, um, they, what we wanted to deliver in the end uh, with Daisy Beta, besides all the features that we promised, because we want to implement them in that patch that's going to go out uh, after we're done, uh, we also wanted to bring a tool set and, and uh, Daisy servers uh, out for the public. Uh, so with uh, Daisy Beta, we're going to release basically everything that we use to create Daisy. Uh, so that the community can actually create their own mods and, and yeah. make some awesome creations yeah. for Steam Workshop. Yeah. Also, uh, sobald die Beta rauskommt, werden auch alle Tools, womit diese Beta gebaut wurde, um, veröffentlicht werden, damit eben auch die Community damit schon, schon arbeiten kann um, für, diese, für diese Übergangsphase. Jetzt sehen wir natürlich, wenn wir jetzt hier zum Beispiel ähm, Material sehen von, von Daisy jetzt hier aus dieser Beta-Version, das sieht jetzt auf den ersten Blick nicht so viel anders aus, aber der Wechsel war halt auch eben notwendig, um die ganzen Sachen, die sie auch in Zukunft noch planen, ähm, dort einzubauen, viel, viel leichter in die Engine reinzukriegen. So, what we are actually seeing uh, in terms of, of gameplay and, and the graphics, of course, there is, this, the change is not very visual. It's not something that when you sort of look on day one and day two and they are completely different games. So the people that are going to, to play the game are not seeing the changes that much. They haven't seen it before, but I think as soon as you actually start playing that game, the new mm -hmm. version, you'll see it immediately. Like, there are of course issues, you can see it in the video, from, from like uh, weird camera collisions and like some bugs and things like that. But that's all polished that, that's going to happen within the next few months. Uh, but the thing is that if we want to have a platform that's easily moldable, um, has high reach, so we can actually create even like different genres, whatever. Like it, it, the script that we uh, used to create Daisy is is a strong tool uh, that's going to enable, enable the people who are going to work on it uh, afterwards, or create the mods or the creations on Steam Workshop. But also, if you look at what the game is supposed to be, like it's 25 by 25 kilometer map mm -hmm. uh, that's inhabited by players, uh, zombies, wolves, cows animals, there are interactions between the animals, so wolves hunt cows, they actually like go drink from a pond, they live their life, so, they, so do zombies as well, and all these entities in the game uh, uh, are trying to achieve something, and the, when you look at it, are excited about it, mm -hmm. so it, it was nice to see the feedback instantly. Also ich habe ein bisschen Quatsch erzählt, das sind natürlich auch neue Assets schon dazugekommen, also neue, neue Grafikelemente, aber was viel wichtiger sind, sind ein paar Änderungen am Animationssystem, am Nahkampfsystem, das ist auch das, worüber wir gleich noch mal ein bisschen mehr im Detail sprechen wollen, also tatsächlich ja, Gameplay-Änderungen, die mit dieser, dieser Beta kommen. So, let's talk a little bit about more uh, about the actual gameplay changes. Mm -hmm. um, you said you got a new uh, melee system, you get, of course, new animation for all that stuff. Um, what are the gameplay changes that will play out the most when you when you start yeah. uh, DayZ better? So since uh, one of the first things that you have is your fists, like the melee combat yeah. is really important. Um, the thing about melee combat before is that the old animation system only had like full body animations and without going to technical details, it basically limited the amount of uh, specific movements, interactions that we could do in the game. And, and we wanted to lift all those limits and the clunkiness that everybody described mm -hmm. uh, uh, about DayZ and actually get the flow of the game, the controls and the, how they respond to, uh, to you actually pressing them uh, and using them, uh, that changed a lot. So I think as soon as you start it and, and put your hands on it, you're going to feel it. Uh, but going forward from there, when you look at what actually Daisy has now in the game. Uh, what's missing is things like base building, uh, helicopters, and things like that. And all those things we want to put as soon as, as beta hits, and some of the things might get pushed down the road a bit, but I wouldn't expect that to be like years or months. It's going to mm. be uh, a really, really fast iteration because we have two branches on Steam, so it's like experimental and stable, and we're going to keep iterating on experimental as fast as we can so we can get the, uh, the content to our players. But yeah, all those features that we promised from, from base building, they're going to be there and available. So you could set up your own camps with lights and watchtowers and just like actually guard just the stuff that you actually looted from the mm. world, uh, from zombies and players, and you're going to be using locks and all that just to secure the and position. This, and this is going to be in the better yes. as soon as it launches? Yes. So 
Base Building will be there at the start. Yeah, yeah. Cool news. Also, ähm, ganz kurz nochmal zusammengefasst, was das jetzt alles war. Nummer eins, es wird, äh, sobald die Beta startet, ähm, ja, Basisbau geben. Es äh, gibt weiterhin natürlich zwei Varianten, Daisy zu spielen. Einmal auf, dem Stable, äh, auf der äh, Stable-Variante quasi und einmal auf den experimentellen Servern, wo sie so schnell wie möglich versuchen werden, ähm, neue Inhalte äh, nachzuliefern. Das ist ja jetzt auch schon so. Und ähm, dann ging es auch ein bisschen um die ganze Geschichte, wie ja, Daisy sich immer so ein bisschen clunky angefühlt hat, weil das ja auch eigentlich nicht ein Spiel ist, was also die Grundengine, die ganze, der ganze Motor, der das ganze Ding betreibt, ist ja nicht für so eine Art von Spiel gedacht gewesen. Ähm, deshalb hat auch das Nahkampfsystem in dem Spiel immer ein bisschen komisch sich angefühlt. Er also hat selber, gesel selber gesagt, ähm, ja, so eine gewisse Clunkiness, die ähm, wahrscheinlich jeder Daisy und wahrscheinlich auch jeder armer spieler kennt. Das ist einfach so ein bisschen äh, Teil dieser DNA. Und davon wollten sie loskommen. Ähm, also im, im Kern-Gameplay einfach eine flüssigere und eine angenehmere Erfahrung zu machen. And um, I would imagine that seeing all the other games that came out um, that were inspired by DayZ, um, being in, in the core mechanic, being having some of the core mechanics uh, done better, like melee and stuff like that, that would have been quite frustrating when you see like, okay, you've, you've got your project, like DayZ, who's got the initial idea for many of these, uh, of these games, and then there are other games that uh, are uh, released, even if they are released to early access, but they are of course built for this kind of game. They are not like a mod for a military mm -hmm. simulation that was never meant to be something yeah, like yeah. that. And uh, so uh, they, they, um, uh, they can do all the stuff that you said right now already. Was it frustrating to see uh, all those other games coming along I wouldn't go that far faster? because I, I, I really do believe that what we're, we want to bring to the market is so different from the competition that kind of sparked from DayZ, uh, if, even if you mentioned like H1Z1, mm -hmm. uh, even PUBG now. Like there is a core loop in the game, spawn, loot, die. You basically get in the world, find gear, and you die eventually, either to environmental hazards, survival, Uh, or the enemies that you meet in the game, either players or or, uh, or NPCs, and like there's there's a very specific theme to Daisy that I feel that goes back to the heart of what the Bohemia is, and that's simulation. Mm -hmm. And I, when you look at all those games and and the structures, like we want to we want people to feel like it's a real world, like it's not a game. Mm -hmm. Like you want to feel the harsh environment of Daisy that's going to punish you for everything you do wrong, mm -hmm. and you need to learn to survive. And I don't think that happens in those games. Like I, I, I love PUBG, but the, the thing is that it's an it's a shooter that that just like concentrates on the on the spawn loot die mechanic and yeah. gets it gets yeah. it as short as you can. Yeah. So you get all the iterations of, yeah. of the uh, of the action that happens there. And same goes for the other games. Like yeah. they are different. And then when I look at the data, I can see that the crossover between the games in, in real sales, mm -hmm. like the types of people who buy those games, are quite different. Because when you look at this and, and get the stalker feel, the post Soviet environment, like mm -hmm. real environments that are built To copy actually the map, Chernerus, that's that's uh, running on Daisy. It's a small part of Czech Republic, mm -hmm. Ustina Labem. Yeah, nice. So you can yeah. people can can see that that the world is quite different from what the competition offers, and we want to go with the simulation forward. We just want people to feel like it's a real world. And yeah, it might be frustrating in some points, but we know that we can do it better. Okay. And that's the point that I have to reiterate because there is no way out of this. Besides having a good game, <laughs> like that's that's there's no way other way out of this. Like have a good game, get it out, and people will be happy. That's that's the only way out. Okay, interesting. Also ähm, erste Ansage: Es gibt hier keinen anderen Ausweg für Daisy außer ein sehr sehr gutes Spiel zu werden. Das ist auch die, äh, das Ziel der Entwickler. Aber ich wollte gerne wissen, ob es eigentlich für Sie frustrierend ist, wenn Sie andere Spiele sehen, die seit dem Early Access Start von Daisy rausgekommen sind, sowas wie ein Heinz Set 1 oder jetzt eben auch Player Unknowns Battlegrounds, was ja durchaus gewisse Parallelen hat, ähm, die äh, teilweise sich schneller entwickeln, teilweise erfolgreicher sind. Äh, ob das für Sie als Entwickler ein bisschen frustrierend ist? Und ähm, Eugene meinte, dass das dass das Grundgefühl, was ein Daisy vermitteln kann, bei keins von diesen Spielern ihrer Meinung nach abgedeckt wird. Denn diese Grundlage, dass man eben in einer realistischen Welt unterwegs ist, in einer glaubwürdigen Welt, wo es im Grunde genommen immer um den ähm, wiederkehrenden Zyklus geht, nämlich irgendwo spawnen, 
looten, Sachen suchen und versuchen zu überleben und dann eben sterben. Ähm, diesen Kreislauf, den sieht er in anderen Spielen nicht so realistisch und auch so ähm, ja, bestrafend zum Teil, wenn man eben äh, Fehler macht, ähm, umgesetzt. Und er sagt ihm, das ist natürlich auch ein bisschen aus ihrer Historie als Bohemia geboren, die von, von möglichst realistischen Simulationsanspruch kommen. Klar, mit Arma ähm, weiß man ja, wo das, wo das herkommt. Und dieses Grundgefühl wollen sie natürlich ähm, in dem Spiel dann auch haben. Natürlich ist die, die, ähm, ist die Spielwelt, die jetzt hier äh, ursprünglich in Arma 2 drin war, ja auch an eine, eine realistische Umgebung angelehnt. Und von daher überträgt sich dieses ganze Grundthema Realismus und Anspruch und eben auch äh, harte Konsequenzen. Das überträgt sich eben in DIZ und äh, das wollen die Entwickler so gut machen, wie es irgendwie geht. Und sie sagen auch, es gibt kein anderes Spiel, das das so in dieser Form, in dieser Breite äh, bietet, so cool eben auch vielleicht ein Player Knowns Battleground ähm, sein mag. Es sind eben dann doch äh, teilweise sehr, sehr unterschiedliche Ansätze. So, um, we don't have a date for the, uh, for the better version, but um, do you have sort of an idea of a date for when the game will be finished? Is it like... Do, do you have intern, internally something like, okay, we want to have it at version 1.0 in 2019 or something like that? Is there? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, but also, I really can't talk about <laughs> it. The thing about dates and, and uh, our uh, burnout on them, that's, it was that we, we tried our best to plan around all the risks that we were encountering. But when you have a technological backlog this big, the risks come up at the worst time, usually. Like, it always just goes wrong. So we decided that uh, like the next patch that's going to happen is going to be beta. That's sure. Like Nothing else between what is now and, and beta. And we need to finish it as soon as possible. And there is, like, the thing about Gamescom demo is that it gave us really good focus. Uh, because we, when you look at all the games, um, things like base building are nice. And, and those are nice features, and they enable players, and their retention increases because they can stay in the game longer. But the core things that you encounter from the get-go are controls, camera, gunplay, melee. Those are the important stuff that we wanted to get as much as we can into the Gamescom demo, yeah. uh, so we can actually show that to the players. And from there, we are going to keep implementing everything. Before we are done, we're going to get it down on experimental as soon as it's playable for the public and and then roll to 1.0 as fast as we can it's but with beta since modding comes with beta i think it's going to be an awesome ride going okay. going forward ja, also äh, kein genaues, keinen genauen Termin weder für die Beta noch für das fertige Spiel. Sie haben intern äh, einen Termin, den Sie gerne anpeilen würden, aber den kommunizieren Sie nicht. Aber für Sie ist jetzt erstmal wichtig, die Grundspielmechaniken, rumlaufen, schießen, looten, ähm, das so sauber zu kriegen, wie es nur geht mit der neuen Engine, mit dem neuen Gefühl und dann eben hoffentlich vielleicht auch ohne die ja, Clunkiness. Und das ist das, worum es jetzt in erster Linie geht. Und sowas wie Basisbau ist cool, aber es ist im Grunde genommen nur ein Feature und man braucht eben diese ganzen anderen Funktionen die ganze Zeit durch. Von daher wollen sie sich darauf konzentrieren. Sobald wie es geht, wird diese Beta auf den äh, Experimental Branch ähm, auf Steam verfügbar sein. Wann das genau sein wird, wissen wir leider noch nicht. Äh, wer jetzt auf der Gamescom ist, kann es natürlich einfach mal ausprobieren und äh, ja, selber mal äh, spielen und schauen, wie fühlt sich denn das jetzt, das neue Daisy jetzt dann an. Ähm, Eugene, thank you very much for being here with us and uh, telling us about the, the better and um, well, maybe next year we see something that's near to version 1.0? Um, I do believe that when you see the game in this state and when you play it on the booth, you can probably come to a conclusion it's not going to take that long. Okay. But I, it's just not really <laughs> worth saying that um, in, on a concrete date. Uh, but yeah, thank you for having me. Das war's von unserer Seite aus. Und äh, ja, wir schauen mal, wie es bei uns hier weitergeht im Stream. Ich glaube, als nächstes steht an, ich habe mein Programm nicht hier, sehe ich gerade, also weiß ich gerade nicht, was als nächstes ansteht. Lasst euch einfach mal überraschen. <lacht>